From the uh, New York Compost, uh, young men reveal why so many of them are single. Dates feel more like a job interview. Yeah, no shit. And I would, I would totally agree. One hundred percent. And I have a comedy routine about this. <laughs> All right. Now, for whatever reason, women drop right out of the box, pre-programmed to do this. Like mm-hmm. quite literally, uh, I've been on dates where women are like, "Hey, uh, you know, are you gonna, are you going to retire at some point? How much hey. is in your four hundred one k? How many kids <laughs> do you have?" Would you be opposed to having more kids? Or what if so what if you know a woman you were going out with had kids? What would you what would your feeling on that? And like I would get like this laundry list of questions. So I came up with some of mine that would uh, you know <laughs> that are important to me, like what is the serving temperature of a pork roast? <laughs> nice. Can you name three spices that are found in spaghetti. <laughs> Hmm. What kind of cheese goes on the lasagna? I, I, literally, I've had women you know, <laughs> I'm not your slave. I'm not cooking for you. And I'd be like, all right, that's a shame because I would have accepted for an answer, uh, you know, salt, <laughs> pepper, and garlic, but you're, you're fired. <laughs> <the hell out. laughs> Interview over. <laughs> Moving on. But I'm serious. Uh, it really does feel like a job interview. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially, I went out with this one woman who was, uh, she was an attorney. And she's the one that was like her, her questions. I felt like I was being uh, cross examined. This is like, mm-hmm. you know, seven, six, seven years back before I retired. I was like, oh my God. And she's the one that actually asked about my 401k. So I thought that was uh, pretty aggravating. Well, the the yeah. three questions that you never ask in the modern day is uh, you never ask a man his salary, uh-huh. a woman her age. Or that special fancy little patch on the uh, Ukrainian soldier's vest. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, Sorry, we'll I didn't, talk about that you, later. <laughs> that's that's a different stream. But uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, according to the New York Compost, here we go. They're single, but they're not mingling. That would be me, one of them. Mm-hmm. New data from the Pew Research Center has shown that 63% under 30 are single up from 51% in 2019. Mm. Uh, Decouf, isolation, and women's high expectations for something serious are the main reasons they're avoiding going out and coupling up, young guys say. D- can uh, you now- see what date this article was written? Because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really buying the Coof narrative here. At this all. was from the first this month. of this year, yeah. March 1st, 2023. Okay, so they just aren't catching up to reality and want to blame it on Koof when it's really something else. Well, they're they're probably still we'll asking that. guys that are they're still probably asking guys that are driving alone in their car wearing a mask. So the person who's writing this article, would you say they're guilty of douchebaggery, oh. ass fuckery, or just straight up fuckery? What what would you say? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It's it's still pretty early in the article, but uh, yeah. okay. Right now, we're just going to put it. Let's give him a few more sentences. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say, dates feel more like a job interview now. Much more like, what can you do for me, and where's this going? Said Ian Breslow, a 28 year old high school teacher who lives in Astoria. So this must be overseas yeah. somewhere. Uh, the getting to know you period is gone, and that doesn't feel so great after coming out of isolation. Wah. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Look, hold on here. Here's, I have to interject here. It, the I getting got, to know you period. Okay. <laughs> getting to know you period is for the guys. They want to financially suck the ever living wow. life out of. Um, that doesn't happen to the guys they're actually attracted to that getting to know you phase is happening in the parking lot pretty quickly. If you get my, my drift, uh, oh, there. you're talking about uh, getting, uh, you know, bent over the dumb cumster. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's basically yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, or you know, like what happened to me one time. I went out to my car. It's the summer in Fort Lewis, and um, I leave the bar. It's like one in the morning, and there's an imprint of a woman with her tits <laughs> on the hood of my car and two handprints. I'm like, God damn it! I should have came out necessarily. I got a good show. Uh, I was. I was just uh, looking in the chat. Uh, apparently, this was in uh, Queens, New York. There was also okay. an Astoria in Oregon. So. We're still here in the States. So. All right. Good, okay. good. All so right. Correct. Continue on. Uh, 
Uh, he recalled a recent first date that went quite well until the woman interrogated him on their walk home. Mm. Oh no. Here we go. She, she literally asked me, would you rather our kids go to public or private school? Followed by Is several this first more. I um, hope it's not a first. Is that a first day? Um, it does not say. It says. All right, well, all right, oh right. nope. Yep, he recalled a first date. A first what? date? You're talking about kids wow. already? God damn! Oh god, no. Our kids. Our kids. She's already right. suggesting. Okay, I how know, old I was she? Does it? Never mind. Hang on. The minute <laughs> they start here. talking like this, you know that they're in baby raby mode. That's baby what I was going to say. They, She's uh, coming up on the the wall. Yeah, look, she's probably north of 25 or 26. Mm -hmm. She knows that uh, the, you know, she can hear her, her wax works down below drying up. And it sounds like cellophane or Rice, Crisp Rice Krispies and milk. You just take your pick. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, followed by more several more extreme questions about getting married. I started responding with what I knew she would hate the most for to get her to leave. Good man. Yeah. Amen to that. Experts agree that women certainly are wanting more than ever before. Uh, what did well. he say? <laughs> the overall picture is that if a woman is going to go on a date with a man, chances are it's not for casual fling. Ronald Levent, Professor Amateurs, of psychology at the University of Akron told the Post. Um, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to disagree with that because, uh, yeah, uh, women do go for casual things, but uh, when they're close to the wall, they want to lock well, down again as soon as possible. That's exactly what's going on here. That, that's yeah, the th I'm getting. This is, uh, she's had her Chad and Tyrone's for the last decade, and now she needs the beta Bob to come along and pay the bills. Uh, and, you know, you know, yeah. put some kids in her really quick too, before that time runs out. Man, for the non-traditional garbage scowl woman who fell out of the horror tree when the good man shook it. <laughs> and actually, the uh, that professor goes on to exactly explain exactly what we just said. Especially if the woman is kind of getting close to thirty, she's thinking about the biological clock and wants to have a family. Yeah, the epiphany phase. Yep. Yeah. Breslow isn't looking to settle down and get married anytime soon, so he'd rather have casual flings. Just right be careful. On. Latex protects your paychecks. Yep. Yep. You know, uh, he's not not the best looking guy, you know, no homo, but uh, still better looking than I am. I Jimmy. <laughs> he's like the middle of the bell curve. Yep. He's All right. 4.5 to a 5.5. Yep. He goes on to say, the way dating is currently just makes me want to hook up lo locally with no stress or strings attached. Fortunately, that part him? comes. No, <laughs> fortunately, that part comes very easy. I'm unmotivated, unmotivated to search for something serious for the time being. And I don't All right, hang you. on. Why on earth would a man with two brain cells to rub together in the current uh, culture that we live in actually be looking for that long-term marriage bullshit I, I quite literally these dudes are like train wrecking their lives before they get to the age of 25 yeah well and again what's in it for them you know yeah uh, so go ahead yep. and get married and, and, and here's the thing if you want to have a family if you want to have children I can understand. Aside from that, though, there's really no uh, benefit to it. And even then, there's still a high per, uh, chance that you end up losing your kids in a custody battle anyway. So is it really even worth it? That's right. You know Listen, um, like I've said before, that uh, four days a month you get to see your kids, a father does not make. Mm -hmm. Nope, so, not at all. And listen, that is a long, punishing road. You know, I literally just got done walking it and yep. I, it sucked and I cannot recommend in good conscience, any man get married at all. Now, yeah. if you are going to get married, just do it one fucking time. So when it blows up in your face, you could say, Hey, I gave it a go. 
it didn't work out, move on to the next objective. Mm -hmm. Yep. And as, as someone that has personally seen what you went through pop with my parents getting divorced, it's ugly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, gentlemen, if this is something you're truly deeply interested in doing still, even after all the content you've watched, uh, I want you to take half your earnings now. I want you to set that in an account because at some point you're going to need it to pay those bills later uh, after alimony, child support, uh, and 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 you get to pay for a lawyer's fees too. So, uh, yeah, just save up now if that's your plan. Yeah, <laughs> like quite literally, um, you get married. Right after you get done being married, you step into the booth to receive your Capri Sun straw on your spine <laughs> or they just drink your soul away and turn mm -hmm. you into a mindless lackey that, you know, they want to keep alive for an extra 10 years Yeah, so you can walk with the yoke of slavery on your back. No, thank you. Yeah, no, thanks. Mm -hmm. See, it looks like they have another gentleman here. Andrew Bruno, a 28 year old nurse from Belmore, New York, says flirting in the post COVID area isn't as fun as it once was. Being able to naturally approach people while out isn't like it was pre pandemic. Uh -oh. People are still much less likely to leave their groups or their cliques at bars. And they're, cer they're certainly less talkative, and that's lowered my initial incentive to put myself out there. It sounds kind of wimpy, yeah. but all right. Yeah, I don't know I mean, about I go, that. I go out all the time, and I really didn't let anything listen, in the past three years bother me. So I know. Listen, you go out, and you do your shit. And why? Listen, don't ever care what people think of you mm -hmm. or anything like that. You are your own person. And if you're not going out because you think you're going to get like put down or whatever, you're literally being imprisoned by the other people that you don't even know who the fuck they are. That is so stupid. Mm -hmm. I would agree. All right. Uh, uh, he also says the pandemic more than ever before made dating apps the central means for meeting people. And he's not a fan. No. As no, someone no, that no. has used dating apps before, don't do it. Yeah, do not do not. it. Don't do it. Not fun. Uh, what is the data on that? I wish I had uh, our, our wonderful Crusader Nate with us tonight. But it's <laughs> something like uh, women are, are swiping left 80% of the time or better. Yes. Um, yes. And, and most guys are in the average on that bell curve. Yep. So you're on a dating app. And <laughs> if you're a super sucker, you're paying for a dating app just to be ignored. So what, what would be the point? You know, if well, you want to meet a woman, do it the old well, fashioned way in person. <laughs> if you look at the bell curve between men and women, like when they look at the bell curve on these dating sites about men who, you know, swipe right or left, mm -hmm. it, it literally looks like a normal bell curve with most yeah. of the people in the middle. All mm -hmm. right. Now, with when you look at the women, that bell curve is all the way skewed to the right. So like 90% of them are, you know, they're, they're dog shit. And then all of a sudden at the very end, boom, it goes up. It's like a huge hockey stick. Mm -hmm. That tells me mm -hmm. one thing. Men approach dating with a calm, rational, logical mind. Yep. And women approach it with nothing but emotion. I mean, if she makes a good lasagna, it's still an option, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and I would say you mix that with mental illness because 57% oh of the women under the age of 30 I have a mental condition of some type. Yeah. Are on some kind of uh, medication. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, and it, it's it just it blows my mind um again this is this comes from the uh the artificially inflated ego these women that are and i said this uh before the stream these women that are maybe uh, let's just be honest they're they're fours what maybe maybe fives if we count fives i would say five is artificial because you can put anyone at a five but uh four you know uh suddenly all of her simps are saying hey uh you know, I, I, I think you're beautiful. You're different. You're special. I would, I would love these women have an artificially inflated sense of what their actual SMV is uh, sexual marketplace value. They think they're eights, nines, and tens. So they're ignoring the guys that are actually the fours, the fives, the sixes, whatever in their range. And they're only going for the top percentage. Here's the thing that these women don't understand that top 20%. Maybe they're bored and it's a Tuesday afternoon, a little bit slow, and uh, they decide, sure, I'll bang one out and move on with my life. But uh, these men are not committing to these women. These no, women no, have nothing to offer these men. No, they don't, and except being a slump buster. 
That's it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like yep. You're you're in a rut. You want to break your uh, your you know string of bad luck. You know, climb on top of a four or five and get it over with, and then mm-hmm. move on with your life. It's well, a, and that's a, it's a bail, and you know it's a bail situation, which is bang and immediately leave. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like yep. these women, eighty percent of them are competing with men that they're going to have to share if that's what they want. And, you know, they, they don't like that idea, but uh, that's where they're at. Well, Well, the funny thing is if, if the man makes enough money, they don't have no problems with sharing the man. But again, that man's not going to commit to those low value women. Nope. No, he's not. No, especially women with a high body count. Yep. That's another one. Now listen, in, in my younger days, I dated some really fine looking women. And they had questionable pasts and it got to a point where they're like, well, where's this going? I'm like, it's going back to my living room table or that's about it. (laughs) And they got all pissed (laughs) off and that, that was the end of it. But listen, uh, you know, if you're on your frame of dignity, honor, and self-respect, self-respect is very important part of a man's frame. And if you're with a woman, who's been the town bicycle, it's going to oh, impact no. your self-respect. And the high-value men who are on their frame will never compromise their frame. So if you have a past that might bring dishonor or disrespect to the man down the road, chances are that woman is not going to get a long-term seat on no. that uh, that train. No. Nope. And the other thing, they, they do not understand bottom line, modern women, this is why men are checking out this whole point of the topic tonight. Uh, modern women don't understand that men simply want peace. I know right? that that's it. Like we don't want to come home and argue. Uh, there was a, I actually saw a TikTok today where this woman, the, the dude had just worked 13 hours and she insults him saying, you can have a bite of my pizza. And he's like, oh, wait, I just wanted a meal. I've been working my off for for 13 hours and you can't even make a meal you're sitting at home doing nothing it's a joke like women don't want to be a man so what is there left to offer nothing listen men are so easy and Mm -hmm. we're we entertain ourselves we we don't get involved in drama in fact we don't like drama at all no we like to come home put on the game have dinner and, and then everyone shuts the fuck up. <laughs> That's it, it. It's that easy. Yep. Am, am I wrong? Nope. No, not at all. I'm serious. Like you walk in, like oh, shut the fuck up. Give me a beer. Give me, give me 30 minutes. Yep. Let me go take and, a shower. And you deal with shit, but yeah. Let me take a shower, wipe, you know, clean the fucking shit from today off. Like when I was married, my, my ex-wife was really good at the whole calendar sabotage phenomena. Oh my God. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Like I, special I, dates come up and all of a sudden there's an argument. Yeah. That, or yep. uh, you have, a, you have an open weekend, you have nothing going on. And all of a sudden you get woken up at nine o'clock on Saturday. Oh honey, we have to go do this. Yep. Like what? What? Like no, literally on two vacations, I got woken up, drove, driven to her friend's house. And then we roll up and there's a goddamn moving van. I'm like, oh great. I'm moving these people. Aren't I? Yeah, fuck. <laughs> oh no. I hate yeah. moving people. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, fucking- well, it's always convenient when there's like something you've planned and that'll be the day where the huge argument comes up and it pretty much destroys the plans you would have had that would have been fun. Yep. Because she wanted to argue about something that happened six years ago, January twenty first of blah blah at three in the afternoon. Okay, is this really what you want to do? Because this is what you really want to do. I guess we'll just screw up our plans for the day. Sure, why not? (laughs) Well, you want to know why that happens is in her mind, you know, you tricked one of her only ifs or for nows. Uh, That's usually what what kicks off a woman in a a fight. She gives you permission. You're doing it, but sometime between point A and B, when you get to uh, permission and you're supposed to be done, Somewhere in that gap of time, the you know for now wears out, and on your you're back in fight you know in fight bank. Case in point, oh. a buddy of mine went hunting about two or three years ago. 
said, hey, honey, I'm going hunting for four days. And she's like, oh, yeah, okay. So he leaves on Thursday, comes back on like Tuesday morning. She's lividly pissed. And it turns into a big fight 18 months later. And she throws it in his face. I didn't want you to go hunting. <laughs> it's like, you fucking <laughs> said I could go hunting. What the fuck? Oh, and because shit. in her mind, for, the for now wore out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is the only if and for nows. These these women are fucking everything up for us, in my yeah. opinion. Are you are you getting excited about long term commitment? Watching us? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I, 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 I literally, <laughs> Jimmy. I, let's, no. let's let's jump there back isn't in. Too, there we've, is, we've got a yeah, lot to cover. Is, yeah. <laughs> there isn't too much. There isn't too much left in this article here. Uh, let's see. All right, got it open up here. Okay, let's keep going. Hey, he says uh, this just really isn't my style. Like there is a week's long prerequisite before you can think about getting involved, even for casual things, Bruno says. I'd rather take all that effort and put it towards my career or your yeah, hobbies, hobbies or yeah. anything, to, anything to bring you the peace. Or, or you literally, literally that, brings, that brings you value. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he says, uh, and like Breslow, he's in no hurry to get hitched. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm also still very young," said uh, Bruno. "said I don't feel the need to rush, especially if people don't act as naturally as they did before the coup. Mm -hmm. uh, why would I no, put and it that's, all out there? That's well, one thing I, to point out. So women, they they hit their epiphany phase come 27 to 32, roughly, right? Uh, yeah. That's when they realize time's up. But for men, we can go 38, 39, 40, and still. Being our prime, assuming we've made smart decisions, yeah. we are in no rush at all. And okay. women want us. What's the old myth that you just marry young and have kids and everything will work out and money will come later? Like, that's the biggest crock of shit they've ever sold us. <laughs> three, three, two, one. Bullshit. I missed it. <laughs> all right. Uh, but, for yeah. Mike M., a 25 year old in Queens. Jesus Christ, what's up with these New Yorkers? It's yeah. his, these not the opposite crazy. sex's, social skills that are still battling a bad case of long coof. Mm. I definitely can't walk into a room and go talk to someone I'm interested in like I used to be able to. It feels like my outgoingness has suffered some atrophy. atrophy. Okay, now All right. I'm, I'm going to address oh. that for half a second. All right. Um, if you're not you uh, social skills is like a muscle, right? So if you chose, and again, it was a choice. I know some States were worse than others, but if you made the choice for the last three years of your life to lock yourself in a house and not talk to anybody. Yeah. Your social skills are going to decline because if you're not using it again, like a muscle, it's going to decline. Correct. That's bottom line. Um, you're, you got to get back out, back out there and actually talk to human beings and not be afraid of the world. Or you just unplug your, I cares. And yeah. Just do it. Yeah. You'd be surprised how successful you get once you don't fucking care anymore. What's what's the what's the mantra, Pop? Fuck, Fuck it. it. I, I do it all the time. <laughs> uh, literally, I'd be on the back of a C-130. The ramp comes down. I have the parachute on my back. The light turns green. I'm walking out the back of the plane. Fuck, Fuck it. it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's the way it rolls, man. Yeah. Yep. But hey, right, but Jimmy, let's. Is, you're talking about uh, New York yeah. City. Now, uh, uh, now, the men in New York City are a whole different breed of pussy. Mm. <laughs> all right. Now, not all of them. In some of the rougher ghettos, you're going to run into dudes that, are, that can scrap you up pretty good. Yep. But the women, you know, when they get older, they don't want those guys. They want the, the nice guys with the good paychecks and what have you. They're pussies in New York City. Mm. They are. So these ladies are probably spending their 20s and early 30s, you know, with Chad and Tyrone and Pookie Ray Ray doing their deal. And then they they show up in the, you know, the train station at 30 thinking that, you know, Mr. Wright is going to be standing there waiting on them. And he's going to pay full price for the beat up Lamborghini with, you know, 500,000 miles that it, is now her Bermuda Triangle. No, I'm sorry. I wouldn't even pay Pinto prices for that, and those things explode on rare impact. Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, go to redonculus.com slash donate 
and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the Meat Gazer box. 